This is Andrew Broussard with a, another watercolor landscape tutorial for y'all. Here we're going to play with a very fun triad. This is quinacridone gold, brown matter, and indigo. Um, I believe I originally had seen this um, triad or read about it on Jane Blundell's, Blundell's website where she does a lot of watercolor experimentation and a lot of different um, videos, brand comparison and whatnot. This is all Da Vinci brand. I do have some Quinn gold that is um, the Daniel Smith brand. I, I don't have brand, brown matter from any other brand, but I do have indigo from, I think, Windsor Newton. And I think either the Cotman brand or um, the Van Gogh brand. So that's what we're going to play around with um, this triad. We're going to look at it as if it's our red, yellow, and uh, blue. And it's a really fun one. It gives a really beautiful effect. So I'm going to take my core sheet of Stonehenge Aqua and uh, saturate the paper as per usual. Okay, so this uh, helps the paper stretch out and we, I usually, I paint wet and wet, so Gives for interesting painterly effects. Now apparently, and this is before I had started watercoloring, they had a different pigment for the Quinn Gold, and I think it was apparently supposed to be like super duper fantastic. And when people heard that it was being discontinued, I think people s snagged it up. Um, Quinn Gold these days, I don't know what the difference is because I never had the old one. Um, is there pigment information? It's very good light fastness, transparent. Pigment PY150 and PR206, so it's a combination of um, two, I believe. The brown matter, PB19, quinacridone violet, and PR101. Mars red, red iron oxide, and the indigo, Prussian blue, PB27, sorry, PB27, then PB19, quinacridone violet. Is quinacridone violet in both of these? Huh, okay, so these actually have the same pigment within them, and this then has a Prussian blue mix into it. And this one has the Mars Red mixed into it. I wonder if I could buy the PV19, Quidacridone Violet, and then those other two pigments from those companies. That might be something to look into. And this one did not have an overlap. I never noticed that before. So that's, that's interesting. Look at the uh, pigment information on the paints that you have and see what they're uh, comprised of. If I had those other pigments, I could potentially have mixed those rather than purchasing these tubes. Okay, so let's get started. If you've ever, never seen a Quinn Gold, it is really beautiful. Nothing uh, set in stone in my mind, but we'll see what takes place. I'm going to mix the uh, brown matter with indigo for kind of purple. Let 
that just flow down. All right, it seems like we have a sunset set type feel going on. Just stretching it out a little bit more. Let's um, see if I can get this even darker. That dark side sky. Now I might even lift it up and let it flow and move around. <laughs> Makes it even darker. Let me get some more of this indigo on this plate. I um have kind of separate palettes or plates for some of the different triads and for um, interesting combinations. What I need to do is kind of standardize and get uh, some of those kind of sushi plates. Those seem to be really good for mixing. I'm just building up this um, the sky with the darkness and allow this to be kind of a sunset. Then we'll have this silhouetted background. Maybe I'll bring this down, connect this land right here, and make it more of just like a little pond lake. I let the darks blend together. I wonder if we do a little bit of lifting with some light, show through, just some gentle. It's like a brilliant sun. There, and I'm going to put clouds and whatnot around it. Let's see. Continue to build up this dark. I don't remember how the drying shift was with these. I haven't used this combo in a while. So I thought it would be a good change of pace compared to um, the other palettes that I've been working with. And, um, you know, have some interesting different content for you all. By the way, um, just my normal spiel. A whole bunch of links down below. Um, I do have a Patreon account. I'd love if you can would consider supporting. And um, money from that goes towards, you know, paints and supplies and papers and whatnot. And I do have, um, I, have a, I have a super cheap tier and then a second super cheap tier. And the second one has a little bit more um, free content, uh, exclusive content. So, you know, if you can, uh, please consider supporting me on there. If not, I understand. You see more of the indigo coming through in this spot.
And that's that queen gold. Okay. Let's see, one more dark pass. Now it's time for some interesting clouds. So I'm gonna wash this off. And I'm gonna wipe it. I'm gonna grab some Quinn gold. They're still wet and wet. So we're going to this will be kind of the golden glow on clouds. This is something I do with the raw sienna on the other palette. Mix some um, brown matter. Let's see what we can grab. Would like them to be a little bit more blended. So the spray bottle helps. I'll put that red down in here. And then grab that dark. Back side. And that's going across. Flatten this out. Um, I always film these live, and one of the person that watches live, uh, Turkey, uh, came in and said that they bought their hate brushes and they came in yesterday. So, um, you know, people that, you know, follow these videos, um, hake brush, that's, that's what I'm using, is a goat haired brush. It's, this one is manufactured, I think, by, um, Pro Art or um, Cheap Joe's, you can get them at those locations. And there, it's a specific type of hake brush where it, um, it's kind of pre-worn and it helps for different effects rather than the traditional hake, which is kind of used just for um, applying water or broad swatches. The worn one has a kind of chiseled edge you can get for different lines uh, and different texture effects you can have. I'm just lifting up some clouds. All right, now it's time for more dark. And I'm gonna put a kind of tonalist tree structure in this area. I'm gonna have to darken it. This will be the foliage. The outer edge where we get more shining through. And as we get more to the middle, it gets darker.
Okay, let's grab the rig of brush. I'm just using this to put on some heavy dark pigment just to make sure the brown matter and the um, indigo. Everything's still pretty wet and wet. some shape and texture to the grass structure. And darken that back here. Do a lighter wash for some far horizon clouds. Actually, why don't we grab some Quinn Gold? And then start glowing, see what happens with that. You can see the brown matter. Pushing wet and wet and a little bit of color around to see what type of interesting cloud stuff we can have take place. Just trying to get an interesting look for this one. What I want to do is dry it off and darken up these structures. So here's a dry off.
we did have quite a softening take place and it's not um not completely dry but i'm going to take now the quin gold and this will be the outside foliage from this guy brown matter Then I need my indigo mix. For the dark. I feel like I'm really going through indigo with this one. And I also need it for the trunks and whatnot that had dried quite a bit. So like I always say, you can pass over the trunks that are already there, or you can do a, another set, and this will create um, a density, a, um, a depth within the, um, the bunch of trees. Sorry right there apologize okay let's see the darker interior mass Set these structures in place. Bring this mass around. What I'm doing is kind of just doing a dry brush up, dry brush down, as if this is, a, you know, the reflection. And I'm just um, looking to see if I want to keep that nice and soft in the background, if I want to build up on it or what.
can get more dark. It's almost pure indigo right there. Let's see how it sits and compares with everything around it. I think indigo as a color was um, used a lot back in the old days. But I think the um, the old indigo was um, fugitive, meaning that it faded easily. So I think they have a different mixture for it now. Same with the uh, brown matter. I think it's a uh, now with different materials. <sighs> Let's try it off, take a look. Try something drastic here. This is might be a make or break type thing. Quin gold. It's going down green. Let me get as clean as I can get. Trying to give everything kind of a 
a little glowing feel to it. So it's a fun triad, something to experiment with. Um, I think a lot of people may have indigo in their um, collection of paints, but not a lot of people would have like the brown matter. Might have the Quinn Gold. Um, Quinn Gold, I think, could definitely have its place in other palettes as well. Like this is just kind of just the, the triad playing around with it. But just uh, that golden glow of it, I think it really does um, kind of hold its own if you add it to other palettes. I think it might be time to start wrapping this one up. So it was a good experiment. Um, I'll dry it off and we'll take a picture and see what it looks like. So just looking at it, um, I think that maybe a lot more could have been done. I didn't do any scraping or um, some other textural effects that I usually might play into um, a painting. I think you know, it's a triad I used to enjoy that I would like to start doing more of. I think it may hold its place potentially within tonalism. Like the kind of to like as a separate tonalist palette, but I think the uh, cornacridone gold can definitely start um, making its way into other palettes. It gives um, that glowing sunset effect, while also uh, not being too opaque. Just my one thing is I have to be careful with it pushing green very quickly, even with uh, if I use dirty water with the paint. I think that's what had originally started right there. But it was pretty interesting, pretty fun. Um, and hopefully I'll be back later on today with more videos. And I will talk to you later. Have a good day.